I did not want to cry today. <sighs> the 2020 vlog has just been a slew of tears. <laughs> What's up, peeps? Welcome to the vlog. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, guys? And welcome back to my channel for today's video. We're doing another vlog. I'm sure you've already figured that out because you clicked here. So my work day actually just ended. It is six o'clock right on the, well, it's not right on the nose anymore. It's like 15 past because I was just answering some YouTube comments. Get some lights going on in here. So I figured today, always adjusting tripods. It's my life in a nutshell. I've been trying to make the vlogs super organic, but also keeping the structure of vlogs and keeping the consistency in the planning of vlogs just because I am working really hard to get ahead of schedule so that by the time I leave this apartment, everything is just rolling. Whatever I feel like is a relative topic to my life for the day is kind of where I've been going off of for creating vlog content. Hence why the last few vlogs have been things like, you know, sharing my morning routine or sharing with you guys some like truths about isolation that I feel like I'm learning and trying to give some grace to myself with. And so today I wanted to give you guys an update on a whole storyline that I feel like I've talked to you guys about multiple times here and there, both on my podcast and on this channel when I did the skeletons in my closet video. If you guys ever watched that, it is a very, very long video. There is a podcast version and I'm planning on doing a coffee talk update on just all of those things as well. But for today's video and for today's vlog, I wanted to share with you guys more just like you know, like hang out and talk about those topics rather than have talking points and regimented things that I want to say. One of the, I would say, more not uh, difficult, yeah, difficult life scenarios that I've gone through since puberty pretty much has been definitely body image issues, body dysmorphia, dealing with restriction, dealing with just so many different things. And so I talked a lot about it in that video. This might also, I feel like I, I should just make the disclaimer that this video could be triggering. So just a forewarning, but I'm gonna make my best effort to make this non-triggering. This is supposed to be very uplifting, very open, shine some light on the other side of those types of things. So if you guys need a bit of a recap, I'll give you one. Um, I went to therapy to start dealing with a lot of my body image issues and a lot of my eating disorder tendencies back in 2018. And since then I have gained a healthy amount of weight back. I haven't weighed myself in quite some time, knowing that I needed to gain some weight back onto my body, knowing that I wanted to get my period back, knowing to, that I just wanted to change and once I hit that weight I have been very very careful about whether or not I choose to weigh myself now we can talk about that I don't want to get too talky in the beginning because I feel like we have b-roll and things to share but yeah I just feel like scales are still kind of an emotional tie for me like I feel like it's not that I think that there's anything wrong with scales I just think that I know myself well enough to know that if I step on a scale whatever number I see I'm gonna have an emotional response to so just in terms of my own like like recovery per se, I, I just don't, I don't weigh myself. I don't really think that there's much value in it aside from just making myself feel weird or like kick myself back a few steps. So I don't actually know how much I weigh, but I do know that I weigh a lot more than I used to. And I wanna talk about that today. I wanna talk about weight gain. I wanna talk about the benefits that have happened since I've gained weight back. And also some of the harder things that I still struggle with since I've gained weight back. And just hang out tonight. Today was grocery day. So I do have all of like my, my good cooking foods. And I, I pretty much live off of, I, I'm a bowl kind of gal. Like I love making a good bowl with like a base, a protein, a couple veggies, a sauce, a garnish and calling it a day and some seasoning. So during the week, that tends to be what I, I eat more of. I love that I'm just like flipping this pan like a master chef right now. Anyway, I've been making stir fries and then I go ham on the weekends and I just order my food, myself food and get what I want. And like yesterday I got sushi and on Saturday I got Italian food and it was bomb. So I'm gonna make myself a Buddha bowl tonight. Feel free while I roll through the B-roll to uh, make yourself a coffee, make yourself a snack, or if it's dinner time, breakfast time, make yourself a meal. And then we can sit and chat about all of the things that I just discussed. You know I wasn't? 
But then I remember that I have an Outlander episode tonight, so... Guys, don't question it, okay? This has been happening a lot more in isolation than I'd like to admit. But it's usually over FaceTime, sometimes. <laughs> super weird if I just sat on the floor right now. Okay, so first of all, if you guys are Outlander watchers and you've caught all the way up, last night's episode is a whole lot. Yeah, it was, it's an intense episode. I will warn you that. And I feel like this is way too close to my head and it's really hot. So by the time I was ready for bed, it was 10 o'clock and I, I really wanted to take the time to sit down and really talk about this because this isn't just a brush over topic. It's now the next day if you haven't gathered that. And I've made a new cup of tea that is very, very hot. So while this cools, um, or by the time this cools, we'll be done this little chat, hopefully, I mean. You know, girl can talk. One of the processes of dealing with where I was before anyways, which was just yo-yoing back and forth between restriction and hyper control, and not just really with food, it was like with so many aspects of my life, and, and it was really a way that I, I used to deal with anxiety and try and keep myself safe and, and small to where I'm at now in life. The most healing way that you can come out of that really is to give your body stability, to give your body the ability to trust you, trust that it isn't going to go through that process over and over again so that it can stabilize. And the best way to do that is to find your natural weight. Now, I have in the last year and a half now slowly gained weight, like it wasn't an overnight experience. Pretty much from the time I got my period back, my weight began to stabilize. And facing my fear, by the way, there's construction going on outside, I'm really hoping you guys can't hear it. All right, let's move. Dang, have it. Just trying to have life chats, damn it. Just sit at the top of the stairs. I mean, it's kind of a, a given and it goes hand in hand when you decide to stop living your life just based on your body and based on like diet culture as a whole really and restrictive processing or any kind of disorderly way that you deal with food or weight or your body image or body dysmorphia that especially if you're coming out of a restrictive state that you're gonna need to gain some weight. At least that was my truth. I knew that I was using this as such a physical band-aid for emotional problems. It was making me feel like a failure all the time. It was making me feel just terrible. And I just missed that feeling so much of like being a kid and just not caring about those things and really just living my life and feeling just full and abundant and and good and not basing or obsessing my days over what I was eating or how much I was eating, avoiding going out to eat with other people or feeling super anxious when I was eating around other people or being so aware of like, do they think I'm eating too much? Like these were all really unhealthy, obsessive mindsets that I had when I was really in a, in a dark place in a lot of ways. And I just felt so trapped in this negative self-talk, feeling guilty for then hating my body because I knew it was wrong. I should be grateful for it, but I, I didn't, I couldn't feel that. It was like, you know something, you can consciously know something, but to actually have the emotion and the energy to back up that knowing, God, fuck it, I'm just gonna be honest as hell. I had this really unhealthy like goal of what I wanted to weigh and what I wanted my body to look like. And I remember hitting that and feeling like, horrible. I realized I felt so suffocated by the truth that no matter how much my body changed, I was, it wasn't gonna, it wasn't going to change how I felt. It wasn't going to fix how I felt. I went to therapy for a slew of things like I, I to deal with more than just that. All very all intertwined and interconnected and part of the bigger problem. I think the thing that gets me the most, I just wonder like what I was trying to keep myself so small for. P.S. If I get emotional, I'm like four days away from my period, so it's bound to happen. A lot of my pubescent slash teenage years slash early 20s 
was so dominated by feeling like the only way to stay safe was to stay small, to not speak up, to not feel confident, to not embrace who I am because I almost felt like anytime I'd done that or anytime I did do that as a kid, that was almost like when I, when I would get knocked off my feet. It was almost like the minute I would start to feel good about myself, the minute I would start to feel confident, the minute I would start to feel really happy, that was almost kind of like when life would hit me in the face. And so I had trained myself to believe that just stay small, just stay quiet, and then nothing can hurt you, nothing can find you, you know? You won't get surprised if you're constantly keeping yourself where at rock bottom, really. Learning how to speak up, learning how to speak my truth without apologizing or without disclaiming everything I say, like, oh my God, I'm sorry if I talk too long, or like, oh my God, I'm sorry if you disagree with me. Meanwhile, it's like, oh, this is my channel. I should be able to say what I'm saying, or like, this is my family, these are my friends. I don't have to disclaim myself. I don't have to discredit myself in a lot of ways before speaking up or showing up. I think the other thing that I've realized how much resentment I have or had. I try not to have it, but clearly the subconscious word have just came out there, so there's it's still there, but how much it took from me, or I took from me by living my life that way. I can feel my body getting uncomfortable talking about this, so I'm just gonna like, if I'm not looking at you, that's why. It wasn't just about taking away parts of, you know, my femininity, it took away my period, my hair, my skin, my glow, my energy. Moments with people where I wasn't present because I was obsessing over how I looked or how I felt uncomfortable in my body. Or it took away opportunities that I felt were presented to me by God, fate, the universe, whatever you want to call it, where I, it was almost like the perfect scenario was introduced to me and I wasn't able to jump on it. Blessed enough to feel loved by certain relationships that really helped me through this, but there was one in particular that I felt like I couldn't talk about it. And it was somebody that just so in awe by their energy and I couldn't explain to them why. <laughs> the 2020 vlogs have just been a slew of tears. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I get really emotional about <laughs> It's just like all of this because, okay, this is supposed to be a positive, uplifting, like why I am embracing weight gain and gaining my life back. I, I still hold frustration towards certain areas of my life where like I couldn't, like I couldn't, <laughs> oh my God, I can't even say it. Um, I'm gonna do my best to like spit this sentence out, but it's really hard. <laughs> I did not want to cry today. <sighs> Trying to explain to somebody that you're really into why you can't take your clothes off, like why you feel so uncomfortable. Those types of issues really took things from me and to summarize, it was almost like trying to control my life ended up turning into this chaotic state where it felt like, you know the tower card in tarot? That was like my the epitome of my experience of ending up coming into a healing state in my life was it was almost like everything just started to crumble around me and I could do nothing but watch. To think that I was trying to fight this stuff that I didn't want to face by controlling something ended up causing so much more chaos in my life that I couldn't control and then it got to the point that I just like threw my hands up because I just hit this point where I was just like I'm so miserable like I can't I don't have any energy. I don't I don't have anyone to talk to about this because I was so silent about it. Life kind of felt like it was like taking things away from me, taking people away from me, and I was just like, what the fuck, man? Like, let's just dab those tears real quick. Put our crown back on, remember that we're queens. Take a sip of some tea. Also feeling like I had failed people in my life that I also knew to be struggling and and I wanted them to be healthy and happy but I also wasn't doing that myself, so feeling that sense of failure too, is just so many different things. Anyway, it all led to me deciding that I wanted to deal with this, I wanted to heal this, I wanted to help this, and when I dyed my hair and I cut it off, it wasn't just because I was just like, deciding to find myself, there was so much symbolism to that, and then that's why I got so defensive when people were like, you dyed your hair brown, what the hell? Or like, why'd you cut your hair off? Oh my God something in my eye. So I'm like trying to like detour away from my uncomfortable feelings. I, I shied away and I went into like hermit mode and got really inconsistent with showing up here on my platforms because I just felt so raw and so vulnerable and felt like I had, was dealing with so much that I couldn't talk about and reading things that were really mean that, and I get it, like I have thicker skin now, but at the time, guys, my skin was so thin. You know, my subscribers started to go down and, and, and like that's so silly to care about now. I mean, I know that now, but again, like my, I was so 
obsessed with trying to control and trying to accomplish and trying to do and trying to keep myself so tightly wound. I didn't realize how much I had numbed out my heart, how much I had numbed out my sense of care. If you guys are into spirituality or chakras, it was almost like I was showing up in this sense of like solar power, this sense of um, if you know the solar plexus, when it's in balance, it's a good thing, but mine was completely overactive and my solar plexus was just like leading my life. It was just like, let's burn everything, completely block out the heart because the heart is where you get kicked, has no place here. And that is just so not who I am by nature. Like, so like there's this huge aspect of myself that was missing in a lot of ways. And you know what, this is your fault. This is because you don't try hard enough. This is because you're not working hard enough. This is because you don't care enough. This is because like, these are the things I would tell myself. And then the message that would come through was very much like, no, that's not why you need to learn to love yourself, you're being put through this season of all of this that feels terrible because you need to see what's missing and it's gonna keep happening to you until you learn that it's not about trying harder or doing more, it's about accepting yourself and loving yourself and holy hell, that message got like, I feel like it was just like, therapy was, my saving grace with this because it forced me to talk about it on a regular basis. It forced me to check in with somebody. You know, when you think of just people that are dedicated that run like six marathons and all this stuff, I was just like, that's just the energy I'm embracing. Yeah, when I finally admitted like, no, this is a problem. Like, no, you're being way too mean and way too hard on yourself. You're not healthy at all. What you're doing to your body is not healthy at all. Your body is showing you all of these signs and signals that it needs help, it needs health, it needs balance, it needs restorative healing. I finally embraced that and I talked about it with my therapist for the first time. I felt like the biggest weight come off, more weight come off me than ever physical. What if in the future I had a daughter and she was going through all of this and she didn't tell anybody what would I feel for her? You see things that you can't see when it's you. When I thought about weight gain in particular and looked at it from that motherly perspective towards myself, all I could feel was just that embracing sense of like abundance and love. And you guys have ever heard the term, I, I've, I've coined it from uh, Mel Robbins, but it's follow the energy, follow your energy. It was almost like I could see and feel this golden sense of energy that was calling me towards, you know, be healthier, find your natural weight, stop weighing yourself, stop, basing so much off of these silly things, stop hyper controlling, stop all of that. And I started to walk that path. Future me was sending me a message. Like future mom me, it was like guiding younger not mom me, like kid me or teenage me or no, 20s me. Not to mention that a lot of this just didn't align with my actual purpose. I feel very called to motivation for people to turn inwards and to embrace who they are however they are and how can I tell people to do that when I'm not doing that myself okay let's <sighs> the good stuff now so when I did start to gain my weight back so much changed my hair has been and still is growing like a weed more than anything my mind cleared up my energy came back my sex drive came back my mood stabilized and so many more things in my life seemed conquerable and things unrelated to this, like just having to work and show up and do things and like take responsibility for certain things in life, which just seemed to drain me before started to excite me again. And noticing when I'm catching myself comparing my body to somebody else's and, and just being aware of like, that's not what's true to my heart. That's not what I want. I don't want to be the type of person that feels like threatened by other women's beauty or threatened by another woman's body. I don't know what she's done to get that body. She could be healthy, she could not be healthy. Every single person's life experience is valid and I can vouch that the silent sufferers are usually people that you wouldn't guess them to be. Speaking from experience, knowing that I grew up surrounded by, I don't think I really had people around me that didn't have any kind of food or body image issues growing up, like rarely. I don't know, I can't even think of anyone right now. So talking about this, it helps kind of break that stigma that we're all, if you have a body, you're, you can deal with body issues. Since quarantine, I would say I'm a little squishier than usual, but still, like it's like I feel good in my body. I feel beautiful in my body. I started being inclusive about food, like there's no foods that I avoid anymore. I mean, aside from the fact that I am plant-based, so I do eat vegan. And that's like so much for just like political reasons really than anything. But everything else, it's like I don't not get cookies if I want cookies. I don't, I don't say no to my food cravings. If I wanna eat bread and have a glass of wine, I eat bread and I have 
a glass of wine and I don't have these rules anymore. And it's like even that, because I was in a family that had people that had drinking problems, like I used to feel so guilty about drinking. I used to feel so guilty about eating like a cookie or like, and, like chocolate chip cookies are my favorite food in the world. This year my dad for my birthday made me this big old like bucket of cookies and knowing that I could have them in my house and I could eat one a day and I wasn't eating all of them in one night or throwing them out because I was secretly afraid to eat them was just like, I remember that on my birthday, just filling my heart. Like these are happy tears. These are tears of resilience. <laughs> Overcame a really hard thing in my life, this thing that I thought I was gonna just obsess over for the rest of my life. and. I just feel like I'm in such a good place now and I want to be able to be an advocate for the silent sufferers out there. You will feel so good about yourself when you really do take care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, when you stop trying to deal with emotional problems by restricting or obsessing over your physical appearance and it doesn't have to hold you back. And like I said, I still get triggered, but I've retrained and I in actively in those moments when I catch myself being triggered, I retrain myself by literally, like I call them replacement thoughts. If I have a moment where I'm just like, oh my God, like her body is beautiful. Like she's like half my size. I'll instantly just be like, my body is beautiful. Like, and nobody has to hear you say it. Nobody has to hear me say it. Saying it out loud on camera sounds weird, but saying it in the moment to myself, it just re, it reconfirms to my subconscious that she can be beautiful without it affecting anything to do with how beautiful I feel. And done, just leave it there, drops the mic, walks away, moves on with life. Trying on clothes, and this is gonna be a video that I'm doing, what if my clothes don't fit me anymore, which works out that I'm moving, cause I'm gonna be selling and donating a lot of them. Yeah, I had like a pretty bad day, I wanna say two months ago, a month ago, where I was trying on clothes from spring last year. They didn't fit, and I remember feeling so bad at first, and then I had to replace those thoughts with this is a good thing. It's hard, man. It's hard if you're going through this or you know somebody that's going through this. Like, it was some sort of tweet where somebody had been like, if you have ever pulled yourself out of your darkest place, whether you're doing it now or it's happened a long time ago in the past, like, kudos to you because that is, it takes insurmountable amount of strength to do that. Even if you're an independent woman, I get you, but at least get a therapist because it took me forever and I still work on being comfortable, I'm very selective about who I talk about this stuff to though because I do still think that there are people you have to be very careful with, people that are also dealing with their own struggles. Seek out even just what you surround yourself with on social media, seek out women that are talking about this. I'll leave some of my favorites down below. Surround yourself with people to get therapy, to have a support system of some sort. That's a little bit more about my story, my history, my current update, and check on Bentley and see how he's doing. Hi. <laughs> anyway, things got emotional today, didn't they? But if you guys want more on weight gain and just dealing with those types of things, let me know. I'm probably gonna film it anyway as a coffee talk for the ghost channel, but just to know if that piques your interest at all. And aside from that, I love you guys to the moon and back. I will leave a ton of information in the description box below about all of these things. Please take care of yourself. Please love yourself. Please be kind to others and yourself. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.